Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be seeing if a microphone a quarter of the price of the other can match up to it. And I'm not looking to see if it's a one to one. I'm looking to see if the price and the quality of the Audio Technica AT875 are yes 875r can match up to the sennheiser mkh 416 which is a industry standard quote unquote from sennheiser apparently i keep seeing ads for a microphone that i already own and seeing if it's really a suitable budget option when you compare it to something so highly regarded now of course, I do have a bias here. I have had the Sennheiser for about four years now, maybe, yeah, about four years. And it's really served me well. I, I really can't say anything bad about it. It's very durable. It's given me a lot of work and given me a lot of opportunities in my career. So I will put that out there first, but I'm going to keep an open mind. And I did do an individual video on the AT. 875R, which is a tough one to remember. I apologize if I messed that up, but I I definitely feel like this one is going to give it a, not a run for its money, but it's definitely going to hold its own. So without any further ado, let's talk about the builds of these microphones. And some people feel like the build doesn't matter, but in my mind, I feel like if it's a well-made piece of equipment, it's a good first step. Not necessarily good in all departments, but if it's well made, I definitely, uh, I, I hold that in high regard. So both of these microphones are excellent, well built. Uh, I like the style. I kind of like the style of the AT875R a little bit more. It's a little more unique and a little more just different. And it, it really just goes against like the normal shotgun microphone with the acoustic slots being slots and not just a mesh on the side. If I was able to, I'd love to break this thing apart and figure out how it is constructed, but I really don't feel like doing that right now because I don't want to break it. That would be really bad. And of course, the Sennheiser is a workhorse. It's simple. It's nice, sleek. I love it. Very well built, and I just can't really say much more about it. They're both very well made. And on that note, we're pretty much even at that point. So let's get into some techie talk and uh, talk about tech specs and everything that go into them. So the first thing that stands out with the differences is the line gradient polar pattern compared to the super cardioid polar pattern. And this is something that I want to really listen to and see what is a line gradient from the picture that shows the polar pattern, it seems just like a hyper and a super, maybe altered a little bit here and there. But I want to know how it sounds, comparatively speaking. And let me know down in the comments what you think, and I'll let you know in the outro when I start listening to it after I've listened to everything. All the examples, outside, untreated room, booth, all that stuff. Now, lastly, in techie talk, as always, let's get into the frequency response curve. And the numbers are kind of different. You have 90 to 20 on the AT875R, which is 90 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz, as opposed to the 40, 40 hertz to 20,000. So they're same on the top end, but they fluctuate a little bit by 50 hertz on the low end. Now, as far as these compared, I do prefer the chart on the Sennheiser 416. So that was fairly quiet, a little bit of fan noise for my computer, but nothing too crazy. That's kind of in the sweet spot. And speaking of the sweet spot, like it, let's get into some off axis rejection. And I'm about two to three feet away from the microphones, the tips of the microphones, roughly. The diaphragm is further up uh, at the base of those acoustic slots. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out how a shotgun microphone is and someone walking upstairs. Now on the 90 degree test, I am closer to the Sennheiser right now. Sennheiser's right here. And uh, this is what's gonna sound like in the studio here, mildly treated. 
nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but it is uh, more treated than a lot of other situations. Now 90 degrees on the AT875R uh, side, that thing, you know, that one right there. Uh, this is what it's going to sound like in the studio. And let me know what you think down in the comments on the difference between the 90 degrees, if it makes a difference at all. Now in the sweet spot, about 120 to 130 degrees. This is going to be your off-axis rejection in the studio here. And uh, I'm not going to do the other side because it's kind of tight right here. So this is what you're going to get for that. And now finally, this is the 180 degree test. And obviously these are super and aligned gradient. So they have a slight pickup on the back. So keep that in mind. And I'll be doing more off axis stuff as we move forward through the video. All right, so in the booth right now with the A75R Audio-Technica and the MKH416, and really figuring out if these are comparable options for voiceover work and obviously extreme price difference and we're going to find out if the quality is similar maybe better or probably better for the 416 i'm listening to the audio technica right now and I have been doing a bunch of comparisons with this and I keep saying that I really love this sound, especially with the windscreen on it. So I like that low end. I like the low end presence. Uh, when I take it off, I kind of feel that it kind of gives a little bit too much high end, but uh, it's definitely a nice tone. So it depends on what you're looking for. Let's switch to the Sennheiser. You notice that it's it's a little bit more well-rounded, but I definitely can say that the quality is not as far away as the 175 or whatever this is, like 200 bucks, to the thousand dollar here, and. <laughs> It's it's close. It's much closer than I was expecting, but I definitely hear the difference. I hear the quality in the Sennheiser rather than the Audio Technica. Now, when you weigh in the price and grade on a curve, they're pretty close. They are really close. All right, so we're going to do the Sennheiser, both windscreen and the pop filter. P -p windscreen. Nude, not bad. It's also the fact that it's far away from the diaphragm. When screen with the pop filter. Now with the Audio Technica, both. I forgot this one. Yeah, it's okay. It's also a shorter um, shotgun microphone, so that adds into the distance uh, that you would have between the plosive and the diaphragm. So now I'm back on the Audio-Technica listening with the windscreen off, and you notice it opened it up. It definitely opens it up more to the high end, and it's a more well-rounded, uh, I guess for voiceover, if you're looking for a more well-rounded sound, this is the way you want it. If you want a little more low end and you don't want to have to worry about EQing it as much, throw on the windscreen. It's definitely a good um, apparatus to use and get it into the recording as clean and as natural as possible without any post-processing. Save yourself some time, maybe even save yourself some uh, tweaking on the back end. Now let's go to the Sennheiser. Like I keep, I will keep saying this. You notice the difference in quality, but it's not the eight hundred dollar difference in quality. It's definitely better, but it's not extremely better. It's definitely a nice tone. It's a great tone. I really love the way this one sounds, but. When you listen to it compared to the Audio Technica, it's like, is it that much better? Can you get by with this? 
which in other situations you might think differently. You might think differently when we're outside. You might think differently when we're doing situations where uh, ADR, perfect segue. Let's do an ADR type situation. So it's boomed overhead in the booth right now. So let me set that up. I'll be right back with you. All right, so boomed overhead. You can kind of see the Sennheiser right now in frame. And this is what it's going to sound like. I'm about a foot away from the Sennheiser right now. Maybe we'll get these things a little more straight. Like that. So this is what it's going to sound like in an ADR type situation. Of course, ADR is definitely fluent. So you can have it up in your face. You could have it boomed overhead. I've seen a lot of uh, ADR situations be boomed overhead. And I've even seen voiceover situations boomed overhead as well. So keep that in mind. So same situation. You don't. It's a little more bright, actually, when you think about it. When you listen to it right there, it's a little more bright. It opened up. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's a little nasally. I definitely think it's a little nasally. But as far as comparing them, they're pretty close. And if I back up a bit and we get a little more of the room, the booth, uh, yeah, I mean... I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments of the difference between the two. Uh, I'll get a little closer for you for an example so you can understand what these microphones have to offer. Close proximity. I'm more like six inches away from the fronts of the microphones now. Boomed overhead. So much more closer than I ever imagined. Uh, let's put the windscreens on just for example's sake. All right, so still on the Audio Technica with the windscreen on, and yeah, it takes away a little bit of that uh, high end, and the low end is definitely more emphasized. And this is what it's going to sound like. Obviously, boomed overhead, windscreen on, maybe a little less noise. You let me know what you think. I think there's a little less noise. It's close. I'm listening to it live, obviously. When I listen to it in post, I could have a totally different opinion, which I'll let you guys know in the outro. And I have a feeling that I'm going to still stick with the Sennheiser. Spoiler alert. But that could really tie into my, like, bias. I do have a bias to the Sennheiser. I mean, it is an investment that I made. I did invest in both of these. But it's a much higher investment with the Sennheiser. And also, I've had a lot of good experiences with the Sennheiser in my work and, and this channel and things like that. So keep that all in mind when you listen to this. I want you guys to have your own opinions. I have mine. I'm just giving you mine right now. And if you feel differently, that's totally up to you. I mean, everybody has their own opinions. If this is close enough that you're like, I'm not blowing thousand dollars on a microphone that i could spend like a fraction maybe a fifth of the price i'm with you on that if i could save money and get almost the quality yeah i kind of definitely am with you on that all right so we're in the untreated room right now at 875r and the mkh 416 audio technica and sennheiser with a Untreated room, you're going to have to deal with a thing called phase delay. Now, this is not always. This is if you have a reverberating sound, so the similar sound, so my voice, for example, reverberating off a surface and coming directly back at the acoustic slots. The acoustic slots are supposed to reject noise. Now, if it's rejecting a similar because it's not directly the same sound. Obviously, once it reverberates, it's a different tone and it reverberates differently but it's still a similar tone. So it's going to kind of muffle it a little bit in some instances. So keep that in mind when you're listening to this test and see which one might be better. I have the acoustic slots set up so that they're not directly in those positions. So the slots are not directly from the reverberant side. So the ceiling has the reverberant side and uh, the back of it obviously has it because there's a flat wall there but the sweet spots are kind of, I tried to sit situate them the best way possible so keep that in mind when listening to these tests without any further ado let's get into a distance and off axis test now I'm about like five feet away maybe six feet from the fronts of the microphones a little bit further to the diaphragms because the diaphragms are 
behind the acoustic slots. So keep that in mind when you're listening to this test. Uh, you probably got a lot more room noise and a lot more uh, echo, I guess, quote unquote, maybe a little reverb. Uh, depends on how my voice is casting through the room and how it's uh, being portrayed. So 90 degree test to both of them. This is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room. And I'm gonna do my best to give you uh, is the sweet spot right now, but unfortunately it's not in a position where I can do it perfectly. Right now, I'm roughly at that 120 degree test or 20 degree position. And this is what it's gonna sound like. Maybe a lot of reverberation behind it, but I don't know, I, uh, you guys let me know down in the comments and I'll uh, let you know in the outro how I felt about it. So uh, this is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room on the sweet spot roughly. All right, now lastly, 180 degree test. Obviously, I just turned it around the best I can. So this is what it's gonna sound like with a super cardioid and line gradient. Remember that line gradient for the AT875R. Is that 75? Yes, sure, let's go with that. Uh, so that's what the test is gonna sound like with 180 degrees. You might not hear me much, so keep that in mind. All right, so we're outside with the Audio Technica and the Sennheiser. This is the environment that I'm very excited to try out and compare these polar patterns and the size of them. We've got a small and a medium. I know some people call the Sennheiser a small, but when you compare it to a small, quote unquote, a real small, it's bigger than that. So it's a medium size. That's much my opinion. So if you think the Sennheiser MKH 416 is a small or a medium, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll put out a poll to uh, complement this video as well. So get some interaction with you guys. So for this test, I have the windscreens on both of these microphones, and this is what it's going to sound like outside. You got some noise over there with the road, and you got some air conditioning units all around because it's still kind of warm out. It's not super warm, thank God. But... Uh, you're gonna have a lot of surrounding noise, which is what these microphones are made for. It's supposed to pick up in the front and reject more so the back and the sides. Uh, I think the airplanes are gonna be the biggest um, issue with noise, but you guys let me know and I'll let you know how I feel about it in the outro. Uh, so let's take off these windscreens and see how they sound without them outside. Uh, these windscreens are pretty hefty. They're not like super thin, but they are really substantial. So not only are they going to reject a lot of like soft winds but they're also going to take away some tones that could be possibly useful so keep that in mind when you're using this and maybe a blimp will be useful which we're going to do a test in a little bit with a blimp uh i'm only going to do the off-axis stuff and the noise test without it uh when I put the blimp on, it's just a simple audio test. Uh, so if you're interested in any more tests with the blimp or anything else whatsoever, let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, do a video dedicated to something. I have to have enough meat on the bone with a topic to actually talk about it in a video. Okay, so we're about like five, six feet away from the microphones right now, and this is what it's going to sound like. I'm talking in a normal voice, so I don't have to um, deviate from what I was normally talking before. So you got an example. You probably don't hear me that well, actually, I would think. But uh, it seems like the volume or the gain is being picked up decently. Okay, 90 degree test on the Sennheiser side. This is what it's gonna sound like. Actually, it's really, they're kind of vertical, so they're on both sides. So I'm about two feet away from the sides of the microphones, and this is what it's gonna sound like. Uh, not necessarily in the sweet spot. I'm gonna do both 90s, but I'm only gonna do one sweet spot. Now in the sweet spot right now, 120 to 135 degrees. This is where you're probably getting your most rejection on these microphones, but we'll find out in the uh, post and you'll know right now how it sounds uh, with my voice and rejecting all the other stuff around. All right, other 90 degree test on the closer to the Audio Technica actually in this situation. This is what it's going to sound like and uh, the 120 to 135 was uh, on the opposite side. I'm not going to do it on this side because it's just too much. All right, 180 degree test on these microphones, the Audio-Technica AT, 
875 R. I always forget that one. And the Sennheiser MKH 416. Uh, the line gradient and the Super Partioid both have a bulb in the back, a slight bulb to pick up some noise, but I've noticed that it's not as egregious as it may be portrayed. So let me know what you think and see how it sounds. All right, so Audio Technica is in the blimp. Sennheiser is not, it just has the windscreen on right now. And this is gonna be our audio test about like foot and a half or two feet away from the front of the microphone. I'm not gonna do an off access test because I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. This is just a audio sample and a uh, kind of like an interview style thing. All right, so the windscreen, or not the windscreen, the dead cat is on, the wind muff. <laughs> I don't know what I, what I like more. Or what I dislike more, actually. <laughs> so, wind muff. I like that. That sounds, sounds funnier, actually. Dead Cat's a little morbid. Actually, it's very morbid. Uh, so, this is what it's going to sound like, comparatively speaking, between a windscreen provided for the Sennheiser and the uh, blimp with the dead cat and a lot of kids yelling and screaming. Just the way it is. You're going to have to deal with that if you're working outside with microphones. Okay, now the Sennheiser has the blimp that's the word the Ryko blimp on right now no muff <laughs> on right now so let me know what you think comparatively speaking the audio technica just has his provided windscreen on right now okay so the winds wind muff dead cat whatever you want to call it is on right now on the sennheiser the windscreen is only on the uh audio technica and this is what it's going to sound like about a foot and a half away and not a lot of winds it's a kind of a like stagnant day i'm kind of getting eaten alive back here because it's kind of humid not like crazy humid but a little humid and you got a plane passing by a little rumble there it's probably not gonna uh make much of a difference when it comes to the audio but uh with the windscreen or the what the hell the, the, you know what that thing is it's a dead cat and now it's time to break it down and to see which one is the winner. Now I say winner in a very <sighs> cautious way. And judging by my uh, tone and everything like that, it might give away how I made this thing come out. And you can see the pop filter here and I'm gonna reveal which one is the winner in just a sec. But some things that I need to put into the universe right now before I let you know which one it is, which maybe if you're listening to this on headphones or something higher quality, you're going to know which one it is. Because despite the fact that there is a difference, they are very close in a lot of ways. So without any further ado, the winner, at least in this test, is my well, gesture you could barely tell what it is because of the windscreen but it's the AT 875R and you might be thinking one of two things one you're crazy this is no way a better microphone than the Sennheiser MKH 416 or you are on the side of like yeah a microphone that's a fifth of the price or even more so gave a big performance with these tests now of course there are certain instances where the at 875r lacked and where the sennheiser shined but when it comes down to it i'm grading on a curve because of the price i have to give it to the at 875r it, it's it's very difficult for me because the sennheiser is still my favorite microphone because of the versatility, because of how it sounds, the neutral tone, and and I just love the way it is. But the unfortunate thing for it is it's $1,000. Not many people are going to have $1,000 to spend on a microphone, regardless of the use case. Thankfully for me, I was in a point in my career where I could afford it and I could pay it off, and I was working regularly in the field of audio, filmmaking, and things like that. The thing is, when it comes to choosing the right microphone for the time that you are in the point in your career you need to consider the price always and especially if it's this close so without me babbling any further the 875r is my winner 
but I'm going to break down each section just a little bit further. So in the studio, I said it was pretty close in sound. I kind of preferred the Sennheiser, but it was pretty good overall. Now to the booth. There is a term that's going to be used a lot, and it's called it. Well, it's it is very close. The term very close because very close, little more low end on the 875R. If you noticed in the booth, it definitely emphasized some of that low end a little bit more, which is weird because it has that hard shelf on the low end, but it definitely has that nice presence in the low end. If you like that, I like a more uh, neutral tone with my shotgun microphone, but with this, the Octava, a lot of microphones have that low end presence with uh, especially people like me with my voice and uh, nasally kind of voice. Then when it was boomed overhead in the booth, I noticed that the 875R was a little more nasally than the 416, which gave it an edge, meaning the uh, 416 had an edge in that respect. But it makes sense. It's used for voiceover. A lot of people use that microphone for voiceover. Okay, next up, untreated room. Very close. And tone. Then for the off-axis, the distance was close. The 90 degree and 120 was better on the 416 and 180 was a little bit better on the 875R. Lastly, outside. Very close. Like I said, it's going to be a term that's going to be used. The 875R, the noise was better. Like the noise rejection was better for some reason. I don't know. I, I had them set up pretty much identically. But I don't know. Now, my last thought here. If you're choosing a microphone of the shotgun genre or category or whatever it is, and you are a person who's just starting out, definitely go for this. The A75R will give you a lot of good quality and be very versatile. Maybe not in certain aspects, but I definitely feel like it's got so much potential for someone starting out and maybe into your more intermediate and then when you get more professional maybe upgrade it will last you a long time is what i'm getting at the sennheiser is for people who are established they have the extra cash to spend on a microphone and i definitely feel that in my own personal experience with more variety of tones, more variety of environments and using the Sennheiser a lot. It's a better microphone overall. But in the test that I did, I feel like I would be disingenuous. Is that the word? Sure. I'd be disingenuous. I don't know. Whatever the word is, I wouldn't be genuine in my uh, thoughts and genuine in my comparison if I didn't choose this microphone because it was so close that the price leaned it towards the Audio Technica. If we kept price out of it, the Sennheiser will win by a landslide because I feel like there were certain things that throughout these tests, the Sennheiser shined more so. Uh, some off-axis stuff maybe could have been just the circumstances I was in. And of course, yes, I have a bias. I have used the Sennheiser a lot more. I have a lot more experience with it. So keep that all in mind. But for people who are just starting out, people who are not looking to spend a super crazy amount on a shotgun microphone, this is it. And then upgrade later. Because if you're serious about this, upgrade later. Get the 416 if you're someone who's gonna utilize it in a professional setting. So that all being said, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you checking out the video. I appreciate you uh, sticking around this long and I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative. And if you have different opinions, different thoughts on this, let me know down in the comments. All I ask is you be respectful, be nice, all that stuff, you know the rules. And of course, if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. I have a bunch of videos planned. I have two videos in the cooker right now or in the oven right now that i'm working on so look out for the what's it called octava versus this and the comparison between the two lab systems i did the avx system and the xsw system uh that one's going to take a little bit longer but 
I got to do, I still got to record some stuff. So keep that all in mind. Please subscribe and you'll know exactly when they'll come out. And that's all I got for you. Until next time, take care. I'll see you rebels in the next video.